Good morning, folks. Winter Storm Nova just whacked us here in Colorado, but the warm, fuzzy feeling inside watching the scorching stellar plasma helps a bit. No, it doesn't. We'll hit two terrible ideas here today, get insight into solar storm effects on technology, and a couple of things for you to check out as well. But we are starting, as always, with our star. We had a couple minor solar flares. Filament snap near center disk may have produced a small CME, but it wouldn't be anything major. We lack coronal holes at this time, but solar wind is elevated due to those minor CMEs we saw released several days ago. Are you able to spot the filament snap just left of center disk there? If not, we'll go ahead and zoom in on the region here so you can pick out that snap. Most of the plasma went downward, north and south of the destabilization. Hopefully the remaining filaments either stay stable or are able to pull that same benign collapse action. We'll take a quick check on the KP index, showing the geomagnetic conditions becoming slightly unstable this morning with low-level storm conditions due to that aforementioned CME enhancement in the solar wind. Geez, who told them this was a good idea? Mexican private company going to spray the sky out of a high-altitude balloon this week, simulating volcanic stratospheric injection in an attempt to cool the Earth. This is atrocious, and you couldn't wait for northern winter to end, eh? Geez. In that same vein, they're discussing launching space dust from the moon to block solar radiation incident on Earth for the same general idea of cooling the planet, which is another terrible idea. It's also a bit of a nod to the dust creation of the coming solar micronova and why it helps put a rapid freeze to the planet when it does erupt, like we don't already have enough going on without having to worry about humans trying to play God in the sky. Lastly, on the article front, good one here about the GPS disruption during the 2017 solar storm. It was the biggest of the last solar cycle. Now, while some levels of disruption were expected, this clearly exceeded what would normally have occurred during past solar cycles and events of similar magnitude, once again implying the weaker magnetic field of Earth during the ongoing pole shift is making Earth more vulnerable to lesser and lesser solar storms. And speaking of vulnerability, we hit that topic in last night's special video. Link is below, so please check this one out if you missed it. We covered several key things in only eight minutes there. And lastly, a reminder that merchandise from our hats to our shirts to our children's science books are running thin, and we are going to be transitioning away from that store quite soon. Head over to our Shopify at the link below to grab something while you can. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.